All right, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I am gonna talk about how to use GitHub or how we use GitHub Teams to specify contributor access in Rosetta. My name is Julia Kola-Lehman. I am, as of a month ago, the Open Rosetta Project Director at OMSF, the Open Molecular Software Foundation. And I have been in the community, in the Rosetta community since 2006 and a senior developer since 2011, 2012. Um, so let's get started. So I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what Rosetta is so that you, yeah, you know what we're doing. Um, Rosetta is a biomolecular modeling and design software suite that is used for drug development. And uh, a lot of pharmaceutical companies actually license Rosetta. So um, Rosetta is not yet open source or not yet fully open source, but we are working uh, on this. And so that's obviously a process. And uh, so based on that, because uh, Rosetta is really used for very basic biomolecular modeling, mostly on the protein structure prediction side, protein docking, protein small molecule interactions, we have a lot of different uh, systems and tasks or applications that we can, that we can model and that we can run. <clears throat> So Rosetta is developed by the Rosetta Commons, which over the years has now around 100 labs worldwide. We're mostly in the United States, but we also have a growing audience uh, in, in Europe. So this is a picture of a recent Rosetta conference. Uh, this is only part of the community. We have an annual conference that we're holding uh, up in the Cascade Mountains. And so it is a really large community. So a couple of facts about us, development of Rosetta started in the mid nineties um, in David Baker's lab at the University of Washington. The language, it was originally in Fortran, but now uh, the core code base is in C++, but we also have Python wrappers for PyRosetta and an XML interface for Rosetta scripts as well. So we have around hundred active labs currently and we continue to grow. Uh, over the years, we've had about 1300 developers Nowadays, we have about 15 active develop uh, 50 active developers. Our code base is about 3.1 million lines of code. So, so it's quite substantial. And we have, as I mentioned, we currently have commercial licenses. We have tons of academic licenses, you know, where academic labs are using Rosetta. Um, this is a rough low estimate for the number of publications that are out there uh, describing Rosetta. I have briefly talked about the interfaces to the code base. You might have also heard about Foldit, which is basically a video game that is developed on top of the Rosetta code base. And then a couple of recent successes uh, to show you that, you know, it's actually useful for drug development. So Cumamax is in clinical trials for celiac disease right now. And there's also the first Rosetta developed vaccine for COVID-19, which is currently on the market in South Korea. Uh, and that is called uh, Skycovion. So here are, if you're further interested in Rosetta, there's a few papers that I wanna mention. On the left-hand side, uh, the molecular design in Rosetta is mostly if you, if you are interested in uh, in biomolecular modeling. So this really describes a lot of the applications in Rosetta. The Better Together paper up here in Class Compio is a community paper that really describes how our community works, how we do a lot of the things, and um, community development, conferences, testing, like really anything technical and, and based on the community. And then if you're interested in scientific reproducibility, and also want to dive a little bit deeper into our test server, um, uh, you can check out this nature communications paper here on the, on the bottom right. So let me give you a brief introduction into the Rosetta Commons agreement, simply because you need to know this to understand um, how we use GitHub Teams. And so the Rosetta Commons agreement is purely a collaboration agreement. So again, as a note, Rosetta is not yet fully open source. So, but, uh, wrong direction, sorry about that. Um, but like basically research started in the Baker lab at the University of Washington. So this was basically one lab and then his postdoc started their own labs at other institutions. 
And normally when you develop code uh, or create IP, the IP that is created in a lab uh, is uh, basically belongs to the institution. Now, if you develop code collaboratively, basically you want to make sure that you can share the IP and you share the code and the knowledge with your collaborators. And this was exactly what the Rosetta Commons agreement uh, was for. So this was established in 2002. And really, uh, this the Rosetta Commons was formed to facilitate collaboration and really sharing IP between the labs and the institution. So this was really all that it was. The University of Washington is a fiscal sponsor, basically selling licenses of Rosetta to industry. And we've been using uh, these licensing funds for software maintenance and community development. So this is really how um, it has worked so far. But again, we are in the process of, of moving open source. So why is it important to know how this is set up? Simply it bec because it defines our membership criteria. And our membership criteria also defines how we um, give access to GitHub. So basically, we have the Rosetta Commons members that are members of the academic labs. We have the folks in industry that are you know, users. But also in recent years, many former academic contributors moved to industry and they want to keep contributing. So while our community always had an open spirit, um, our move to open source really requires us to rethink our membership criteria and, and rethink how we're going to make this work. And again, because we have a 25 year history with a huge community, it's 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 not super simple. Um, so uh, Rosetta Commons members can contribute code. So there's basically two different ways of access. There's read access and there's read and write access. And I'm going to give you another uh, brief intro in a little bit. So again, we have industry contributors as well, but our current license complicates things quite considerably, and we're in the process of opening up our repo. So let's go into GitHub Teams and how we have set this up. So this is uh, the view of the main dashboard of the Rosetta Commons organization. And if you look at the top, I'm not sure whether you can see my mouse, but if you look at the top, uh, we have about 82 repos, we have 11 teams and currently over 700 people um, in our organization. And uh, I think the number of people have actually been cleaned over the years, but um, okay. So let's look at the teams. If you look at the teams page, this is the page that you will see. So if you look at the top, this is really um, a very brief you know, intro where you can learn more. So flexible repo access, uh, read, write, admin access, how you can request to join teams, how you can mention teams. If you click on that learn more button, this is actually super useful if you really want to dive into this. Um, there is amazing documentation on, on GitHub if for, for any types of questions that you have. It really depends on your organization, how you want to use it. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, and I'm just going to refer you to this. Um, but I am going to tell you how we're using Teams. Um, and so these are basically the 11 teams that we have in our community. And if you click on, for instance, the developers team, so also, you know, on this page, you basically see the title, the team's title, the team name. You see a very brief introduction, which can be um, uh, cut off simply because it might be longer than the two lines allowed here. You have uh, the number of members that are in, in each team, and then you have the number of subteams. So each team can even have subteams, which we're actually not using, which is why you see a lot of zeros over here. So now if we click into the developer team, um, you will see a page like this. And so you have the team name, you have a brief description of what the team is about, you see the members, you see the number of uh, child members, you can add members, but also importantly, um, on the top here, you can see Rosetta Commons Teams developers. So th this is basically your path where you are right now. And so if you have the, the repositories underneath, 42 repositories, these are the number of repositories that this particular team uh, uh, has access to. And so if we click on those repositories, 
now we actually see uh, all of these 42 repositories that you know this developer team has access to. And on the right hand side, we see what type of access each team has. And so again, this can be, you know, uh, read access, write access, or admin access. And these are built on top of each other. So basically, write access includes read access, which is unlike, you know, if you're if you're using the command line, uh, you know, read access and write access are completely separate. Here, they're actually built on top of each other. And so um, that's basically what I just mentioned. For GitHub Teams, write access includes read access. For the main repos, we have two you know, access levels that we're using. We have read-only access for the broader community. So these are non-developers in the Rosetta Commons or non-Rosetta Commons members and collaborators. So these are really the people um, who want to read the repo, but they don't want to uh, change any of the code. And then we have read and write access. So this is basically what on GitHub Teams would be called write access uh, for developers within the Rosetta Commons. And I also want to mention that we are using the pull request system. So the write access has, you know, is further guarded by pull requests, which require approval from another developer to be merged into the main branch. So if you are worried about um, if you give people right access and you don't necessarily, you want to have another check in place, uh, you can use the pull request system uh, to, uh, to you know, further check that you, know, you, you don't end up with, with, with uh, stuff in the main branch that you don't want. So how do you create a new team? On that main page, there's this little green button. You can create a new team, give it a name, a description. You can select a parent team. Again, the teams... Uh, can be nested, which is something that we don't use, but it is a possibility. You can give it a visibility. Uh, you can specify uh, what type of notifications you want to enable. And uh, yeah, that's very, you know, a very brief overview of how we use uh, GitHub Teams in Rosetta. Another brief thing I want to mention is an onboarding procedure, which is uh, basically how we give access to folks. And we use a semi-automated onboarding procedure with the goal of providing information to new members of where to find stuff, give them access to training materials and papers, uh, tell them how we communicate, but also make sure that this is the least amount of effort for our admins or our senior developers. So, and also because we're not fully open source and simply because um, of our, you know, historic Rosetta Commons agreements, uh, those reports are still guarded and require approval from the academic PI. So this is why, you know, our setup is that way. So we use uh, Zapier um, as our automation tool. And so this is basically what happens on the upper left-hand side. Uh, the newcomer who wants to join the community does two things. They sign the developer agreement, which goes into a, a Google Sheet. And they also sign, they also fill out a Google form with basic information, uh, such as their GitHub handle, email address, who the PI is, um, you know, and, and, and things like that, uh, what type of access they want, read or write access. And so this also goes into a Google Sheet. And then Zapier creates an automated email to the PI approver. The PI approver basically just hits reply all with the word approved or denied. And this email goes to one of the senior developers. That's the guy with the key over here. And this person uh, checks against, you know, whether this person has signed the developer's agreement. And if that's the case, um, they get GitHub access. So basically they get an invite to uh, the specific teams that we've specified. And so that's how they get, you know, GitHub access. Uh, the Zapier will also automatically invite uh, the newcomers into Slack, uh, Google Groups, and they will also send them an email with the basic information, just like all of the things that I've mentioned, training materials, documentation, forums, how we communicate, like all of that stuff. Um, so that way everybody gets the same starting point and then, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, has has access to the community. 
And so that onboarding procedure really means that only the PI and the, the senior developer are the only two people who have like a super quick manual steps to complete to really onboard new people into the community. And uh, we can really do this pretty much at scale. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. And I will hand this over to Emily again.